dystopia warning obviously welcome back to general election day i'm going to stop calling it a general election and just call it the, the, the death of the conservative party in slow motion as many of you will be aware, the Conservative Party unleashed their manifesto on the public yesterday. I'm not going to pay too much attention to the content of that manifesto because it was mostly lies and insanity. Those two things are the only things that they've been consistent with over the last 14 years and this general election campaign is no different. But before I get into that, ITV released some clips today from the Paul Brand interview. You know, the interview that Rishi Sunak rushed home from the 80th anniversary of D-Day to film. As I said in my video the other day, the Conservative Party are expecting this to be very damaging. Saying it's very damaging is like saying that Putin's a little bit naughty. Mind you, they'd know all about that, wouldn't they? Considering the amount of Russian money that they take. The interview is due to air tonight. And they've decided to show a behind-the-scenes clip of Rishi Sunak rushing in to the interview with Paul Brand and apologising. Apologising for being late because D-Day ran over. Hello. Good to see you. Very nice to see you. Hey, sorry to oh, have well, kept thanks you. you. No, not at all. I know we you've been in Normandy. Yeah, it all just ran out. There was, it of course. was incredible, but it, it just ran over everything. I'm sure it was. A... So apologies for keeping you. No. Holy shit. He's going to get his ass handed to him for this. And I personally hope that he absorbs every ounce of hatred and contempt because that's all he deserves. He's everything that is wrong with the class system and the Conservative Party. It got worse. He was asked if he's ever had to go without, and this was his response. What did you go without as a child? Oh, we went out with lots of things, right? Because my parents wanted to put everything into our education, and that was a priority. So what sort of things had to be sacrificed? Lots of things, right? So, Can I mean, you give me an example All of sorts of things. So, like, like lots of people, there'll be all sorts of things that I would have wanted as a kid that I couldn't have, right? Famously, Sky TV. Okay. <laughs> so. Sky. Firstly, Sky wasn't commonplace when he was a child, but to use that as an example of going without is an absolute insult, especially when it comes to what was contained in terms of punishing measures towards people on welfare in the Conservative Party manifesto. Yeah, I know what it was like to go without too, Sunak. Yeah, I feel you. Instead of being privately educated at Winchester, I was on free school meals at the local comprehensive in which I was bullied for being poor all of my school life. As a kid, I'd hide from the Provident Lady because my mum couldn't afford to keep up with the repayments. My bedroom was full of mould. I'd live on quick save value food. And I didn't just feel ashamed of being poor, I felt responsible for it. My early years were spent under the dying embers of yet another failed conservative government which taught me very early on that there's no such thing as a meritocracy that hard work doesn't always get you out of a poverty trap that having vulnerabilities or extra needs is something to be shamed for blamed for punished for and one of the biggest things it taught me was to hate the tory bastards that didn't just force us to have to live like that but punished me for being born to parents of limited means who are only teenagers themselves, who needed support, not shame. And that's why every single thing that I do is vengeance for what younger me had to endure because the state failed me. It's also done with the four million kids in mind that are having to live how I did growing up now. It's a never ending cycle. The Conservatives destroying the country, Labour coming back in to fix it. Things only picked up for my family when Blair and Brown came to power, when they redistributed wealth, taking millions of kids out of poverty. I was one of those kids that they took out of poverty and I was one of those kids that was punished like they're punishing kids now. We have the power to destroy this Conservative government in this election and we can do that by voting tactically because this is what kids are going through right at this moment try not to eat a lot in one day even though um most of us are really hungry we have to be careful with our food cast your vote for kids like him this government makes people feel like being poor is some kind of moral defect which is a load of bollocks when the concept of a meritocracy is a myth even after everything that they've brazenly done, they're still blaming the poorest in society for their failings 
their negligence and their corruption. And not just that, making us pay for it. One of the running themes of the manifesto, besides all the far right wannabe reform shit, was how they were brazenly admitting that they're going to cut the benefits of the most vulnerable people even further like it's impossible to live on them now and that's not even taking into account that most of the people on welfare are in work yeah and the reason that they need benefits is because of the cost of living the skyrocketing rent and mortgage prices skyrocketing energy prices and low wages their plans are not only economically unviable it's trust levels pork markets levels of madness i don't know what the fuck this obsession is with cutting taxes. Well, I wouldn't mind paying more taxes if they actually went into our public services and not into the pockets of their donors so they can buy yachts and mansions. What they're proposing is yet another round of austerity. Like in 2010 when Cameron and Osborne forced us to pay for the failures of multi-billion pound corporations and the bankers like Sunak who profited from that crash. The Conservative Party isn't a political party, it's a front. Who they really work for are big businesses, they're rich voters and they're donors. In this clip, Rishi Sunak refers to an unsustainable increase in welfare since the start of the pandemic, right? We will pay for permanent reductions in taxation by controlling the unsustainable rise in working age welfare that has taken off since the pandemic. And whose fault is that? Why aren't people in work? Oh, could it be the 8 million plus stuck on waiting lists? Those people that were disabled by the government's negligent mishandling of a pandemic? A government who ignored exercises designed to test our preparedness for a pandemic? Could it be those traumatised, suffering complex grief and guilt because as the government parted and did lines of cocaine at number 10, they can say goodbye to their loved ones and all they get in return is a drawn out insult of an inquiry and no criminal charges when there should be. And then there's austerity linked to over a million early deaths in Britain. Poor, stressed, cold hungry people do not have good health outcomes have a lower life expectancy want to live longer don't vote tory there's been a rise in victorian illnesses like scurvy and rickets babies living in cold houses don't develop properly yet they're going to fund 17 billion pounds of tax cuts for the rich by cutting down the welfare bill by 12 billion and cracking down on tax avoidance and evasion which would include most of their conservative mps hey Reesmog. i mean the guy blocked giving laptops to poor kids at the start of the pandemic. That's the kind of shit house he is. But Ed Conway at Sky costed this. Even after the proposed tax cuts, taxes will still reach an 80 year high. This is the tax burden. And this is really important because this is all of the taxes that we pay. Post pandemic, it's come up a lot. The ongoing plan, so the plans right now from the government see it going even higher. So getting up to the highest level that we've seen since the 1940s. Without adequate support for physical, mental health, well-being, people get sicker, they can't work for longer, they get into more debt, they get more stressed, and they need NHS services more only to find there aren't any. This government's cut vital suicide prevention services. They caused this and they have the bare faced cheek whilst giving themselves pay rises and luxurious benefits to blame us it's akin to a domestic abuser laying over his bleeding wife after he's broken her nose saying look what you made me do something that i'm sure that stanley johnson boris johnson's dad is familiar with google it he also said there's something special about the self-employed, really. I don't think the three million excluded from support during the pandemic, like Tim would agree with you, he's a part of Excluded UK. A group set up to support those who lost their homes, were left relying on food banks and lost their businesses due to a lack of government support during the pandemic. Many have taken their own lives. If you want to support them, that's how you get in touch with them. Another really important thing to remember is that they blame all of this on Labour. They try to make everyone think that it's Labour causing the problems when the funding comes from central government or doesn't in the case of Labour councils. So they deliberately deprive areas in order to con votes out of people, which is why I'm enraged whenever I watch those Vox Pops because they rely on people not knowing this is happening. And why don't people know that this is happening? Because the Tories get to control most of the comms that we receive in this country from the news and from the print media. Reform are con artists as well. They're just a worst version of everything that I've just explained to you. Which is why I'm advocating for tactical voting at the general election. Because destroying the bastards that have done this to us with our vote is the only protest that we have left to use it.